Same to you for me, if you have any desire to, yeah. <laughs> to ask me any questions as well. Um, right. But, but I am here today, once again, with one of my favourite pod friends, which is Chris Brayton, um, because well, he's been through quite a cool few things over the last uh, couple years. Um, obviously, when we last uh-huh. spoke, you spoke about it, I think, very briefly uh, about sort of your health and things like that. But I want to kind of get into the details of that because you've had an incredible transformation. Um, but I wanted to speak about your podcast first, because... Um, well, you bid farewell to the I Like to Like Things podcast, <laughs> um, which is, you know, it was an incredible podcast in its run, and I thoroughly enjoyed not only listening, but also being on it, and obviously Megan was on it as well. Uh, so I just wonder if you could tell us a little bit about um, you know, why you stopped out of interest. Yeah, in, one of the things that we talked about with with I Like to Like Things is that when we did our farewell episode is how much we got from it. And, and I think that's what our, our, our farewell episode really, I hope hit home and, and mm. you as a listener, I hope that that's what you yeah, got 100%. from. I love it. Um, but what was, what we felt was starting to happen was that, um, as, uh, obviously saying like the pandemic is over is, is naive and everything, but Elise and I are both boosted. Both our girls are double vaccinated. Everybody in our life is, is double is either double vaccinated or boosted. So we, our our life was starting to open up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, we were able to do a little bit more safe traveling. We were able to do a, just a lot more, uh, and you know, buying expensive masks and things like that. Our our life opened up, mm-hmm. and so what we were finding was is that, that it was taking time away from what we could do with our kids mm-hmm. uh, and, and what we could do as a family, and so we're finding ourselves like. Uh, not necessarily not looking forward to doing the thing. Cause like we loved doing, um, we loved recording. I loved recording with everybody, all the guests. I mean, I made so many friends, you top of the list, uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> but, uh, but the, um, but we found ourselves not being able to give enough time to the thing that we mm. were going to be part of the show. And so it was, um, we just found out that we just found that like, we were going to, we were doing it half, half, everything was, we felt like we we're going to start having to do everything like halfway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were either going to have to be like halfway for the fam, halfway to the thing that we were doing for that week. And that was not something that we wanted to do. We were, we're very like all in. Now, when we were on full lockdown for basically all of 2020 um, and the beginning of 2021, full lockdown, you know, no vaccines, kids, not at school, nothing. Um, the show absolutely saved us. Uh, It gave us something new to do, something new to look forward to. We could do it all as a family. Um, And because, you know, there's only so many hours in the day and we had to fill all of those. And so it was wonderful. Like we talk about like it legit saved us mentally. And uh, but it was um, anyway, we just felt like it was time for us to stop. We were still super enjoying it. Um, We still super enjoy podcasting. Both of us are open to guesting. Um, I'm not saying that we're not even going to open up another podcast in the next year or so. I mean, I've started and stopped, uh, I think like eight different shows, some of them for years, some of them for like limited, like eight to 20 episode runs, um, designed like that. Uh, so like, I'm always looking for the next podcast to start if, if it intrigues me. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, we're not done podcasting by any means, just like done with, I like to like things. Cause like we really did enjoy recording, especially the response episodes, because Elise and I are best friends. Um, and so it just was time for us to kind of try and make each other laugh a little bit. Uh, and just kind of, we would save certain parts of our, our conversations just to record. So that mm. was kind of fun. So it was more, it was like a surprise yeah, uh, for us to see certain things, but um, yeah, it was a great show. We loved it. We did over a hundred episodes um, did not know where we were going to start. Uh, excuse me, didn't know where we were going to stop whenever we first started in um, it was October of 2019. Mm. And little did we know how important the show is going to be to other people, but uh, how much it was going to be important to us. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, it, it'll be missed by yeah. us for sure <laughs> it is one of those things where it's like um, you know to quote to quote ron swanson you know uh don't half ass two things <laughs> you know whole ass one thing and it's that yeah. kind of thing where you know with broadcasting right. for 99.9 percent of podcasters it is a hobby it's not a career it's not a source right. of i mean you can make a bit of money from podcasting obviously you had a patreon i've got one but not like enough money to live on that would be the dream but like when it's that kind of thing where it's a hobby it's like well, if you're 
if it's taking away from other aspects that you value more in your life, then it's worth reevaluating. And that makes complete sense. You know, I obviously um at the moment yeah because i've got like i've got genuine chit chat which is my favorite my flagship podcast you know because i speak to so many people and it's so cool to be able to um communicate with you know obviously i make people like yourself and lots of my other sort of pod friends and things which is really cool and i've been connected to so many people and there's so many conversations i've had with authors and other individuals who are very interesting who if i just contact them and say hey do you want to have a two-hour conversation on zoom they'd be like no thank you but if i'm like oh it's, i've got a podcast i actually there's actually like hundreds of people who listen they're like oh sweet yeah i'll, I'll be happy right. to come on so it's like it's a good excuse for me to be able to talk to those people and then my second show uh, my star wars show it's that's really fun and i'm loving it and I've almost caught up with the comics that are out for the most part. And I was thinking that when me mm-hmm. and Megan, you know, we're at the moment uh, looking to buy a house, we've had an offer accepted. So in the next few months and so, hopefully if things go to plan, we'll have a, a house and things to move into. And then, you know, we're probably going to get a dog, but then we're going to have a few years, if no happy accidents happen, we're going to have a few years of kind of traveling and do what we want. And then eventually we're going to, you know, settle down right. and have kids once we're past you know, 30-ish in a few years time. But when when we have kids... You know, I'm under no illusion that I'll be able to do, you know, what was it, four or five hours of genuine chit chat a week, plus right. four or five hours of Styles Comics and Canon a week, plus mine and Megan's mm-hmm. Patreon show, which is normally that's only about like twenty minutes, half an hour a week, um, plus right. all the guest spots I do and everything else. You know, I'm doing a weekly Boba Fett discussion show with some people in comics and motion as well, so I'm doing all that. So it's like all this time is being used up by podcasting, and although I do love it, I'm like, well. I'm, while I can, I'm going to do it. But I know that when I have kids and things, the Star Wars comics and canon show is probably going to be the first thing to drop because I'm not I'm not going to have time right. to not only read all these Star Wars comics, but I'll probably have to just reduce it to maybe once a month or so. You know, so I've already kind of thought of those things. So with you saying that, it's very it's for the right reasons, you know, of, of stopping doing a show. But it's also that just mm-hmm. because you stop doing something, as you've said, doesn't mean you don't get value from it. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh like when we stopped cuz my first podcast MGT uh like that was that was a blast but I didn't have two kids mm. and uh I didn't I didn't have two kids at the time we had a baby when we first started it and it was kind of my way to have some like kind of like me time yeah and so it was really uh, and 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 Elise was really pushing for it like oh yeah you need to you need to have a hobby besides just being a dad and I'm like oh yeah you're probably right uh, but then we had our second kid and e- for each episode of the show, we did three, we did three, um, movies per episode. So we we're watching movies and it was just starting to be a, a time where like, yeah, we couldn't really do that anymore. And, and so, as you know, like on my Patreon feed, I had my oldest child. She would, mm. she started, she always wanted to podcast because it's been something that I've done as far, as long as she can remember uh she's she's 11 now but i've been doing it for five or six years and uh yeah and so uh, like the podcasting i was able to fold her into it uh fold the podcasting with elise into into i like to like things so like it became more of a family affair so it was still time spent with the fam and that was what was so important and honestly probably the next podcast i do will probably be a kid's podcast it's been something Mm. that i've really been thinking about um, and something that like I'm really passionate about and it's like entertaining kids and it'll be like a new thing I could do with my daughters and, and uh, we've been listening to a lot more different podcasts that have that focus and I just feel like it's something that would be a fun journey with my my kids and my wife uh, we, but it's something I don't know where it looks like we have a few ideas and I think you and I have talked about a few of them yeah uh, but we're but I think that's probably where we're going next but mm. it'll be it'll be fun either way that's amazing yeah and i look forward to that and obviously you can come back on the show again to promote it as well it'll be lots of fun right um so obviously i wonder i mean i always want to chat with you i mean we chat via messenger relatively every day when there's loads of new because right. we're into so many nerdy things together and stuff um right. but mainly from like uh over lockdown and things both yourself and elise have had some incredible transformations uh to do with weight loss so i wonder if you could right. i mean listeners will see your slender handsome face but i wonder if you can tell the uh listeners sort of you know, I know you've mentioned it on the I Like to Like Things podcast and a bit of some pieces here and there. But if you just want to say sort of what in because the reasons that you and Elisa said on the I Like to Like Things podcast, I think are really in, like really cool. There's similar reasons to um, myself and Megan. We've discussed sort of losing weight and things like that. So mm-hmm. I wonder if you could tell people why you decided to lose weight and kind of 
how it worked this time and your gain your loss right. rather and basically everything that you can want to tell us about <laughs> your about your weight loss stuff because i just think it's so interesting and it's so inspiring and i just really want uh, my audience to hear about it uh so it it's funny because we didn't actually start trying to lose we're coming up on our our anniversary uh which we, we started really trying to lose uh january 27th uh 2021 that was like we were like this is it this is when we're starting this like it was just like today this is it and so january 27th 2021 we're coming up on our anniversary as of today you know when we're recording we'll, we'll be there pretty soon and it's funny though because the journey actually started the year before in in january of 2020 um you know we didn't know covid was coming of course uh you know who who knew what we were in for for the next couple of years <laughs> yeah but in january 2020 we took our 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 daughters to uh universal studios uh to and specifically to go to the wizarding world of harry potter uh that was where we, it was for my daughter's birthday you know let's let's go got her all dressed up and we went there we were gonna have just a blast and we did we had an absolute blast it was so much fun um, but I was closing in on about 500 pounds. It was, I was pretty close. It was pretty close to 500 pounds at that point. And, uh, so I couldn't go on a couple rides mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a big bummer. I love, I love rides. I love going on roller coasters. I wasn't always heavy. I grew up, I was a you know, wrestler, a football player. I played basketball through shot, but like I was an athletic guy, like that's just was my life. I, I played sports all growing up and was always big I, i'm built i'm i what's the word the doctor said densely muscled mm. is what the doctor said so uh like so i've always been a big guy and like there's nothing i can do about that and but uh other than like actual like like fat on my body was never i was always fairly lean um and then but just you know life happened got married super happy with my beautiful wife uh we loved going out to eat we loved going to the movies getting snacks popcorn the whole bit and then we had the girls and then most parents can most parents there's not not every parent knows that like when you have that infant you're just kind of like feeding you're grabbing and shoveling in food to try and stay awake and and all those different type of things just kind of like i remember like we would make these big meals and like you know one of us is holding the baby the other one's trying to eat real fast so we shovel it in so you're just kind of always constantly snacking and man between eight the between being I was 18, graduated from high school, you know, wrestling, played football. I was 285 pounds and I was a healthy 285. Um, at that point with my body mass index, I would, I was at about like 26, 27% body fat, which is, mm. which is under the obese level. I would, you know, cause like for wrestling, you'd have to like do all these different things to see what your weight level could be at anyway. So I always, it's funny cause, uh, uh, when I was telling Elise, like I always knew how much I weighed at any given point because in, in wrestling, you had to be at a certain weight, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then, and then being in sports, I, I kind of equated to being like a show pony. Everyone kind of knows what you look like at any given time. So people always talking about like different parts of your body. And it was just a normal thing for me. But um, after high school and, and uh, I put on between 18 to 38, cause I'm 38 right now. So when I was 37, over those 20 years, I put on over 200 pounds hmm. and uh, it was um, just living, you mm -hmm. know, and, and one of the things that Elise and I always talk about is that we were still really happy. Like there's not this whole idea that like when you're a heavy person, like it's the only thing you think about, like, oh, I'm, so, oh, I'm so fat. Oh, my life is, you know, like some people are like that. That's not how we work. Um, we just were happy, attracted to each other, having a great life and just um, it didn't really slow us down. Now, looking back, obviously, it it really did slow us down. Like we could see that now that we've lost so much weight, we can we can we can look at that. And um, we do see that now, obviously. But at the time, you know, it's just it's, it was gradual, you know, mm -hmm. like we we put on weight and she did about the same from when we got married to when uh, we started losing weight. I think she ended up putting on. I mean, she's fine with me telling you this, like a hundred and, uh, about, about, about a hundred pounds, mm -hmm. uh, for, for her between when we started dating. Um, and when we got, when we got married, which has been about 13, 14 years, mm -hmm. almost 14 years of dating. Yeah. So dating, dating and marriage. So, uh, but anyway, we went to, we went to Universal Studios and I couldn't ride any rides. Mm -hmm. There was like, the, I could ride like a few, 
Um, but there were three very specific. I couldn't ride any of the Harry Potter rides. I couldn't ride a few of the other rides. Like anything that was like a bench seat where a whole bunch of people could get on, I could ride that. Mm. I had to sit by myself. But uh, <laughs> but that was kind of like, okay, I, I, there, I need to make it. Like this is the first time I really felt like something like hindered me. Mm. And, and so that was the big, the big like light bulb. Well, anyway, we're, we're starting to actually lose some weight. We were doing okay. We lost about like 10 pounds. And of course, March, 2020 hit full lockdown kids out of school, you know, people talking about there being food shortages. So we're grabbing all the rice we could get, you know, the, all the, the beans and anything, all those starches that we could get. And we're just like, well, okay, we can't, you know, we can't like try this right now let's just kind of eat what we have you know do those type of things i don't think anybody would blame us for that obviously like it, like who knew we were in like crazy anyway over the course of the lockdown obviously there was nothing else to do but eat you know so <laughs> yeah, totally. we decided <laughs> yes i there's just nothing else to do but eat and watch good shows play some video games build some lego sets you know like that's that's pretty much what we the did dream <laughs> and yeah, it's the, it's the dream. But yeah, anyway, we put on even more weight. Like, so we we were, <laughs> we put on a ton of weight over the that year. And um, <laughs> anyway, uh, so the, the reason I know how much I weigh, because we didn't know the scale, is at, at, at Halloween, I cut my hand open uh, uh, when I was uh, pushing down a trash can. You know, I was going to take mm-hmm. the trash out to the, and I cut my hand open. I had to go to the doctors to get it sewn up because it was pretty bad. So I went there and I weighed myself and I'm looking at the weight like, wow, that's all. That's a big number. That's Mm -hmm. a really, really, really big number. And so we just kind of like that was really putting it like that put into focus, you know, Um, and a couple months later, uh, my father-in-law got his first vaccine shot. Um, Then my mother-in-law, my dad, my grandma, you know, all those different type of things started to happen. The election happened in the United States that changed a ton for just how like uh, like mental health wise for for 90 percent of America that changed our mental health for that and everything. And so in January, um, you know, vaccines were going to be starting to be rolled out for for people our age and and people that were morbidly obese, which was Elise and I, it was going to be coming in there. And so we're like, gosh, we don't want to be on the list because we're morbidly obese like that's not good that's comorbidity and things like that and so anyway january rolled around you know uh the election happened the inauguration happened like we talk about this like mental health wise we needed to be in the right spot we were not in the right spot during all of 2020 we were not mentally ready for it at all we just like we've both we both have said like we're emotional eaters and Mm -hmm. so um it's our way of coping with a lot of things and even though like we're super happy, positive people. Like that was a thing that we did to make sure that we stayed happy yeah. and, and ready to go. And all, yeah. And so in January, 2021, we're like, okay, we can do this. We still have a couple months until we get vaccinated, a couple months until people that we love are going to be vaccinated. So we have time to start where we're not going to be socializing and being worried about like, oh, we're going to eat pizza with these people. Uh, you know, sushi with these people, all things that's that are a like big not thing. great for you. Social, yeah, social exactly. things. Me and Megan have found whenever yeah. we're trying to lose weight is literally always like we've yeah. got, like Megan's really good at like doing food plans every week or even over the exactly. month. And it's like perfect. And then it's like some more context. I was like, oh, we haven't seen you in like two months. How are you doing? Oh, should we go out for a meal? And it's like, yeah, yes, I love going yes. out for a meal. I love eating with right. people, but it's like, but it's so hard. I know yeah. in America, in certain places, it's a bit more difficult as well. Over here, there's yeah. usually some healthy options that aren't just a salad. But mm. a lot of the time we go out and, you know, when you go out for a meal and it's like, okay, this really, really healthy thing is like 10 quid. And this unbelievably, incredibly tasty, amazing thing is the same price. And it's like, well, I want right. to treat myself. I want to have fun. And then someone else calls you the next day and it goes on and on. So I totally understand what you mean with the going out thing. That is, mm. <laughs> that's a killer. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so we... um yeah. And so that was something that we felt like we could, okay, we could get the good habits at least started. So uh, we could get, you know, what our, we could, we could eat, you know, what we, we could set up what we were going to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, cut out the snacks, how our exercises were going to start, things like that. We knew that we could set up, so we had this opportunity to set up how we were going to live the rest of our lives. 
and we planned it out. We had some real hard talks. We, we talked about, um, I know at least as wanted to share this too, like different ways that we caused the other one to stumble in our, in our, um, in our weight loss journey before. Cause like, mm. this is not our first time trying to lose weight. It, it, the, most people, it, it's never the first time. Um, and so like, like one of the things that Elise said that was bad for me is like, when I want to lose weight, I will eat the exact same thing for every meal. Yeah. I, I will just make one, one thing in a pot. It'll sit there. This is what I know will help me lose weight. I can do that. Like I can be militant with that. That kills her. Like mm. she will, she will want to quit immediately. So I'm like, okay, I will not, I will put some more thought into what we're going to eat because I cook probably 90% of our meals just because I mean, like, that's just, I, I'm, I cook. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, I told her, I told her like, if you want to snack or you don't, uh, what, basically what it is like, I want to work out. You will be mad that we're going to work out, even though you want to work out. So you're going to, so like we talked about, like she would, it would be, I would have to make her work out. Mm -hmm. And then even though she wants to, she needed me. So I said, okay, I can't do that every day. So like, we just had those like hard conversations um, about like what in the past and like, we're really honest with each other. And what was super great about, a, about an hour long conversation and just, we, we, we got it all out. And anyway, from then on out, like we just kind of um, we set out to lose. I wanted to, I wanted to be under 400 pounds by Christmas. Mm -hmm. That was my like ultimate goal. Like, so I was, I was a, a li probably over 482 because I was 482 in October, probably put on more pounds over Christmas. So I was probably about 500. I just, I couldn't even look at the scale, like honestly, but like legitimately, probably I was 500 pounds, but I always say, okay, I started 482, but I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure I was 500 pounds when I started. And, um, because I still put on weight over Christmas after October, but I mean, everyone anyway. does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone. Exactly. Uh, not this year, this year I did not, I, I stayed the same. Um, but, uh, so, so we just started off with what, one of the things that we said was why we wanted to say, why do you want to lose weight? Mm -hmm. That was, that was the conversation we said to each other. And for me, cause like, we feel like if you, if you just say, oh, I want to get healthy. Oh, I want to lose some weight. Oh, I want to, you know, those type of things. It's so abstract because we all want to get healthier. We all yeah. want to do those type of things. But we wanted a very specific reason that we wanted to lose weight. And so mine was, I want to fit. I want to fit on rides. Mm -hmm. that, that was it. So that's kind of why it started in that, that uh, you know, back at Universal Studios over two years ago. I want to be able to ride a ride regardless of where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And if I can't ride it, it's going to be because of height, not weight. Like, I, I, like that, that's okay with me. Um. So, and then Elise wanted to not, she didn't want to shop at Torrid. That's mm -hmm. one of the, that's a, that's a plus size uh, place. The play, It's the only place that she could shop for her size. Mm -hmm. And that's what she said. I don't, I want to be able to walk into a store and be able to find at least one thing that I can wear. I'm like, cool. Okay. Those are both really good achievable goals. And so once we set that, everything just started kind of falling into place. Cause it was like, it wasn't about the weight. It wasn't about um being quote unquote healthy or anything like that it was for a specific goal i want to ride a roller coaster with my girls elise wants to not have to shop at torrid or what was the other one? i think it was lane bryant i don't remember it was another store the, the the two stores that she could really shop for um and so because of that it took our mind off of numbers it took our mind off of um it took our mind off of like the sheer magnitude of the weight that we had to lose was because for me to not be morbidly obese, I had to lose about 220 pounds to no longer be morbidly obese for my height. And so, and for her, it was a hundred and, uh, 110 pounds was total, but what she ended up having to, to lose to be in normal, normal bit weight for her too. But it would end up working out to being about 90 pounds of what it was for her to be healthy weight. And so like, but those numbers are massive. Those are huge numbers. And um, like, so to, to, so you could get bogged down in those. So if we had like a very kind of easy goal and so kind of, I thought like, okay, if I, if I'm under 400 by Christmas of 2021, if I'm, if I'm under 400, 
then I can say that like, I'll be able to do something probably in spring of 2022. Like maybe I could get on some rides and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, so we started off really slow. We just, we cut out sugar. We just cut out any sugar in our coffee. We cut out any sweets we cut out. Cause like we, uh, Elise was a big fan of sugar. It wasn't as big a deal for me, but like I realized when I cut it out, how much I was, you know, that's the type of things you start to really realize. And then we just started walking to the end of our street, um, which is about, about a hundred, hundred yards or so, or something. We'd walk there, walk back after dinner. That's just kind of how we started because we're like, okay, we're not going to be those people that are just like, oh, I'm going to like go pump iron right now. It's like your body, it's not sustainable. You're not, you, you, you're not, you're, you think that that's what you're going to do. You're going to burn out super fast. And that's what we did before we would burn out we're just exhausted our bodies wrecked we're not young we're not old but we're not like young 18 year olds anymore and so we just cut out sugar for for a week we're just like let's let's do this and then we walk down the street and then after dinner and then after that after a week or two of the no sugar it's like okay let's cut out let's cut out bread pasta those type of things like okay so we did that so we cut out bread we cut out pasta um we cut out i cut out dairy at least uh, and so did elise like she cut out dairy that was probably the next step um we still have a little bit of cream in our coffee but like that's it's minimal you know just, that's it's just enough to, <laughs> yeah it's like i we we we, there were, we we both said like if i have to cut out cream out of my coffee then i i'd rather just be i'd rather die of of a heart attack <laughs> like i don't want <laughs> like i i'm not it's not worth nothing's worth cutting out the cream out of our coffee and so uh and that was like the hill we were ready to die on. We were ready to die on that hill, like <laughs> cream in our coffee. Um, and so like, and then we started walking um, down the end of our street plus to the next street, you know, just mm. started adding in these little small little areas. Um, and then, uh, and then after that, we cut out, uh, we cut out like starches, like potatoes, um, th things like that. And then that's when we cut out dairy, we cut out like no cheese, no, nothing like that. Um, and then, and then after that, and same thing. We just kept adding to our walk. That's all we did. Just little bits at a time. Like, because like I said, like I was 500 pounds. That's a big, that's a big, like, I'll just say a big fat dude. Like that's just what I was. It's just a big, like, I, there's no other way to say it. Like, so moving that much was crazy. Just trying to move that far. Um, and then, cause I realized like how much, how hard it was to live and then also exercise. Cause like, I could still do all my, my yard work. I still, I thought I was active until I started trying to exercise and I realized how inactive I was. And so, um, after that time, after, so we did it like in a tiered way of, of like adding more exercise, adding less food, or excuse me, taking away food that we would eat. Then we started working on, um, portion control. And really finding a, a place for us to like, what was, what could we eat and still lose and still not want to, 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 to basically kill ourselves <laughs> like that. That's, that's really, you know, like how much food. So we started making, so we really focused on like lean protein, you know, grilled or steamed vegetables, things like that. And just like, and really toying with those type of things. Like, what could we eat? What could we do? What could we eat? on a regular basis that we could just kind of be like, like, like for me, the same thing and didn't have to put too much thought. So we settled on like breakfast was super easy for us to eat the same thing every day. Cause you know, we're just waking up and, and we just kind of pound it down um, and then be done. Like same for her. She doesn't really care about breakfast. I didn't really care about breakfast, but we knew that we needed some fuel. And um, anyway, that worked for both of us. Uh, and we just kept, like I said, we just kept increasing how far we'd walk. Uh, we'd make more things intense. Like I would do a walk in the morning and a walk at night with Elise. I started adding one into the middle of the day. Um, and so, and I would, I, I got a weight vest, so I would, I would wear that and I would start walking with that and started building up more strength and things like that. And, uh, and then we started adding swimming during the summer. That was, that was really nice. Like we would swim a ton and that was allow us to be with the girls and the girls would go on the walks with us. That was a lot of fun. So it was just really good to start talking to each other throughout the day. Um, uh, the girls at some point did go back to school during, during 2021. So like we could talk about their day at school with Elise cause you know, she'd get off of work and we'd go walk. It was lovely. Um, well then what ended up happening is that we had the horrible wildfires here in in california and uh it, it, the air quality went it went very south it was very bad like it was it, almost impossible to breathe mm. 
outside. It was it was just so bad. And that wasn't for a uh, extended period of time, but it was for enough time to where it actually really we couldn't we couldn't go outside mm-hmm. um, for an extended period of time. Like we go to the store real quick and everything, you know, like those type of things. And we were already masked anyway. So like, it wasn't that big of a deal, but like any type of like exercise was just out of the question. So, and about the same time, um, I had maxed out, I, through that whole period, um, I'd lost 170 pounds, uh, give or take, no, 100, 140 pounds, 140 mm-hmm. pounds. And that was till about August, which was an insane. So like not hopefully hoping to be under 400 by Christmas, I'd already done that. And then some by August and it just was like, it just came out of nowhere. It really did. Like we felt so blessed, so lucky. Elise had about the same, I mean, percentage wise, she's much shorter than me. So percentage wise, she was, we were always at about the same percentage lost. Mm. Uh, I've lost more, you know, in total, but like, because I'm so much bigger and like the percentage that I need to lose was so much more our percentages for how much we need to lose stayed basically the exact same throughout the entire time. So she just same thing, huge success for her too. Um, but I, I, uh, I plateaued mm. when I was at about 330 pounds, which was still amazing. I could go on. Yeah. So I'd reached my goal of being able to, to go on any ride. Cause when I was in college, I could go on rides at like 350. I could still go on some of the uh, roller coasters. So I'm like, Oh, I'm good. I reached the goal. But I wasn't done. I, I, and we both knew it. We, we both knew that we weren't done. We could do more. We were still technically obese. Um, both of us were still obese, uh, which was not something that we wanted to do. By that point, we were vaccinated. So we, could, we were doing a little bit more. Omicron hadn't hit. Delta hadn't hit. So being fully vaccinated, you were basically golden, you know. Um, but our girls weren't yet. So we were still so trepidatious because we still had to, you know, hold on to the girls. But so I actually, at that point, I did reach out to a, a nutritionist. Um, it was uh, someone that we knew um, that was a professional and she was fantastic. And basically what she told me was because I could not lose. I, I was working out probably like five to six hours a day. It was insane. Mm. It really was. And anyway, uh, I ended up reaching out to her and she's like, well, basically you're starving yourself. I didn't feel that bad. I didn't feel bad or anything. It just was like, I just was working out and I wasn't losing anything. And I hated that. Like mm. I, I did, I just, I hated it. And so, uh, she put me on a new diet plan, um, institute a lot more protein. That was really what it was like. I was a lot more protein. So probably added another eight to 900 calories actually to my diet than I already was eating. Mm. Uh, and eight to 900 calories probably during the day. Um, and then I, then it just started melting off and I started putting on more muscle, which is what I wanted to do anyway. So it was able to fill out the excess skin. Cause I'll tell you what, there was a lot of excess skin. <laughs> Cause like, uh, it was just a lot anyway. So that, that carried us through, uh, it was, so now I only work out once in the morning, uh, once at night, at least is the same once quickly in the morning. And we work out one more time after dinner, uh, you know, as a family, um, at night, but in the mornings, at least wakes up pretty early. I do it after we drop our girls off at school and, um, started instituting a lot more weightlifting, which is something I wanted to work into. And then here we are, we're sitting at it. Uh, Elise has lost almost a hundred pounds. So she's, she's already smashed her goal. And I'm sitting here at, I've lost 220 pounds. I'm at 262 pounds, which I haven't been that since I was a sophomore in high school. So, uh, we both feel absolutely incredible, both mentally and physically. Um, we just got back from Disney world, uh, with our girls and we got on, it's like, I, I, I got to go on any ride I wanted. It was, it was amazing. I actually cried when I got on our first ride. I did. I, I broke down in tears because it was like, this is the goal. This is what I wanted. And I just, I did. I cried and uh, which everyone knows I cry all the time anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. You, I, you are, I, one of the things yeah. I like most about you is how open you are with your you know, emotional yeah. vulnerability. And one cry. of the things we spoke of before. Yeah, yeah that's, cause that's cool. I, I think more men need to, you know, almost, it's almost come out of the closet of being emotionally sensitive, which is a very weird thing because yeah. as men, it's kind of like, right. what, you cry, bro? It's like, yes, it's, it's called having emotions. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a bizarre thing, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's amazing that feel, you, you did that. I feel this. Yeah, I feel this and this is what I want to do. And then Elise, oh my gosh, she's a smoke show. She's wearing 
whatever she wants. She's shopping online, shopping wherever she feels like. It, it, it's been amazing. Um, so she she accomplished her goal, you know, months ago too. Like she could go in any store that she wanted. So over Christmas, we decided just to maintain. Like we mm-hmm. we we hit it. We set a we set a point that we wanted to hit, and we're like, okay, we know that we could go lower. We know that we want to get fitter. Um, we're feeling we're feeling great. Um, you know, there is still some weight that we could lose to be in like quote unquote perfect health. So like we know that we can do it. We're not changing anything in our lifestyle because the way that we eat is is fine with us. Like we don't really we we've, we've established those those boundaries that we're willing to 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 eat and do and everything. So we said during Christmas time and Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, lots of food, obviously. Uh, we said like we will eat fun meals when appropriate, like when we're with our family or those type of things. But the rest of the week, we'll be eating just our normal good meals. We'll never stop working out. We love working out. It's now we can't express how much we hated working out. Now we can't go. We love working out. Like we love it. Like it gets us, gets us pumped. And so, uh, yeah, so we were able to fully maintain over Christmas. We didn't lose anything, but we fully maintained through that entire time. And we feel really lucky. That's incredible. That too. Yeah. And so it was, so we felt like whatever weight we end up stopping at, then we can start to have those more social meals. And that was something that was when we really felt like we'd reached the mountaintop kind of, cause we were able to have some pretty big and sizable meals and uh, still for the end of the week, weigh the exact same. So we started weighing ourselves weekly as opposed to like daily or every couple days or whatever, just, Hey, at the end of the week, we had our big meal. Let's work out, eat our good food. And we just would weigh the exact same every single week. And we're like, oh my gosh, we can eat pizza. And then the rest, you know, enjoy that meal, make that special. So we just kind of made, and kind of something that we talked about, we're in losing mode now. Uh, we said between January and uh, and Valentine's Day, let's be like in hardcore weight loss mode. Like it's like, yeah, we're all pumped. We had a ton of food. We had some weight from Disney World to work off. And so let's, so um, we're going to see how much we're going to can get down before Valentine's day. It's not an obsession. Like it's not, it's not so much about the numbers anymore. Now we're just like, what, what cause like I'm fully expecting to plateau again. And if I plateau, like I, there's nothing I want to, I don't want to change anything. I don't want to work out any harder. I don't want to eat any less. I don't want to do any of those things. Like I, what I'm doing right now, I love. And what I'm doing right now makes me lose weight. So I don't want to change anything. But now we've kind of now started to re-enter uh, more sociable meals, bigger meals, uh, you know, more bread, you know, cheese, different meats and things, not just chicken breast and fish, you know, just those two things. We've started to let those things come into our lives and realizing that we can maintain a healthy lifestyle and then splurge every now and then. Um, but we're allowed, we feel like we're like our health and our lifestyle allows us to be able to do that. So, uh, and it's, we're still losing in the process, but it's, it's been great. Um, it's changed our lives so much for the better. Uh, and we're just, we feel, we feel really, really good. That's, that's really all there is to it. Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible thing. And it's, it's so inspirational to hear that sort of thing. Like I know a lot of individuals, uh, are, you know, struggling with weight loss or trying to lose weight in things. It's like, you know, I've, uh, when I was younger, I, I was primarily gained loads of weight because I broke my leg when I was like eight or nine or something. And, you know, 10 weeks right. of being inactive from that and then recovery sort of after the cast was taken off and things. And just uh, from there, I was just a bit chubby. And then it just got worse until sort of college time. Mm-hmm. And that's when I started to kind of lose weight and things. And Megan's on her own weight loss journey. She's lost uh, like a lot of weight. and But she was at points hyper focused on the numbers she would weigh herself sometimes every day or or stuff and she would and she's openly said about these things and it's like Mm -hmm. she would get obsessed with the numbers and then feel bad and then kind of make herself feel guilty if one day she was heavier than the following day and i was like you have to if you're gonna weigh yourself do it like once a week or so because every day it can be slightly Mm -hmm. different but also i said to her i was like do you want to weigh the same but be a size in like over here i think size 14 for example or would you rather be the same size you are but weigh like you know 150 pounds less right. like what, what would you rather like what would you ra- and she was like well, i'd rather be smaller yeah. because you know roller coasters and things but also right. you know clothing and that sort of stuff like just everything in life mm-hmm. generally being 
not necessarily easier, but you just don't have to think about these additional elements as much. And right. so with that, you know, she's done a smashing job. She's gone down loads of dress sizes and she's got a personal trainer now and she works in her own way. But like hearing you speak about you and Elise, like I'm more so like you, like I could eat the same meal every day. You know, Megan does right. the majority of the cooking. I, I do all the other chores, uh, but she's an incredible cook and she's really passionate about that. Her, like Br- right. Great British Bake Off, that's her favorite show in the world. And like she loves baking Great and channel. cooking and stuff. It's a lot of fun watching the junior one at the moment, which is on every day of the week. So I'm getting five <laughs> hours of junior bake off a week. <laughs> um, but like she's she's incredible and she can make all these crazy meals and things that are still super healthy, but like utilizing lentils or chickpeas and certain things like that instead of uh, uh-huh. other parts but also you know having leaner meats and not having as much like chips or or fries uh but things like that so it, it's i could i can hyper focus i could eat loads less eat the same meal every day and exercise a lot whereas similarly to elise i think like if i would say to meg we need to exercise now and then she wouldn't want to it's like i I would try and push a bit, but the problem is you get in that weird state where it's like, I don't want to, you to feel like right. I'm forcing you to exercise, right. but I know you want to, but in this moment you don't. <laughs> and when right. you've done it, you're yeah. fine. Afterwards, you're like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. But when you're like, I don't feel like exercising, it's like, I don't want to do anything in the world less than exercise. And it's right. those sort of like kind of internal battles. And you just kind of, you have to find what works for you. And for Megan, she has a personal trainer she sees every week and she feels like that holds her accountable and she does other exercises right. throughout the week and things. And we just make sure, you know, been having smaller portion sizes, that's been a big thing. And just making sure we don't snack in the evenings. Because it's normally like, you know, you have a really healthy meal and then it gets to like, you know, 8 or 9 p.m. a few hours later, you get a bit peckish. And rather than being like, okay, either I'll make more of the dinner and then we'll just have a bit more if we're hungry or just not eating specifically just be like ah, oh, we're kind of hungry now you know we one we just not eat we can we can live through not eating we like, oh let's just have yeah, a, bit, a bit of chocolate you know or a, a few crisps right. or something and it's those little bits in between that become the habit and that's the thing which can kind of undo some of the the goodness you've been doing for the rest of the time so you're kind of like i'm doing this exercise i'm eating less but i'm not losing any weight because of these little snacks in between and so we found right. something similar to that but you know back on the wagon now christmas is always a harder one uh, this year oh you can't you can't it, you gotta celebrate yeah. yeah you have to it, like, it's one yeah, of those you really do i you believe the in balance. that yeah yeah and the thing is megan this christmas yeah. uh she was baking so much she made home three varieties of homemade fudge homemade gingerbread she did that uh gingerbread shortbready recipe that you guys recommended yeah, i know yeah that was so yeah, good she texted she messaged uh she messaged elise and, and was like hey because like like we said like during christmas we did let up and mm. we, we allowed ourselves to to eat a little bit more just like we had those treats and then mm. worked out the rest and were able to maintain. So we didn't lose, we just maintained. But yeah, so she made the gingerbread shortbread and she, uh, and yeah, so Megan's messages at least like, hey, hook me up. And so uh, <laughs> she, she said, don't, but she, but then she messaged me, hey, don't tell Mike, I'm going to make him, like, don't tell him. So it was, she it was surprised really me because I heard, I think yeah. it was on uh, one of your podcasts, you guys were talking about it and things. And I yeah. heard about it and she was like, um, I got in uh, from work and things. She was like, Mike, I've got a surprise for you. And I was like, oh, sweet. And I know she'd been baking and things. And like, I love, I love uh-huh. gingerbread. She is not a fan. She's uh-huh. like you, you know, Germany doesn't like it that yeah. much. Um, but I love everything that you can think of that's bad for you. I like, I like every flavor of crisp or <laughs> potato chip for the American listeners. I like all candy, all of it, like be it uh-huh. sweets or Harry, but whatever, everything. I love uh-huh, right. all chocolate, all varieties, be it mint, coconut, orange, all of it. So the problem is with me is like, I will eat, anything that's bad for me on the planet right whereas megan's fortunately she doesn't like uh sweets candy very much she doesn't like orange chocolate or Uh mint chocolate she just like quite standard flavor chocolate and so when she's making all these things it's like she makes gingerbread she doesn't want it i then have loads of it because she makes spares like can you try this batch (laughs) yes i can i'm making this buttery (laughs) shortbread can you try a bit of course i can so i'm just eating all these things uh and she's trying bits and pieces as well because you're making fudge as well to give to people for Christmas. She right. was giving out homemade fudge, shortbread, gingerbread, and a lot of other things. And she would occasionally, when it's someone's birthday, she'd make a cake for them. And if we hang out with them that day, mm-hmm. we'd also get a slice of cake. So there's all these things where it's like, her right. favorite thing to do in the world is to make bad food. <laughs> so it's this weird thing where it's like, you know, we want to get to the point kind of where you are, where it's like, once you've kind of reached that level, maintaining once you're there is so much easier than losing. Yes. It's one Absolutely. of those things that I've always kind of found. Like, I fortunately haven't got 
as big as I used to be in college and stuff. It's more just, I notice more like just my stomach or sometimes around the chin. This isn't why I've got a big beard now. I'm not mm. hiding. I'm not hiding the chin fat. Um, but it, right. it's one of those things where it's just one has to kind of work out what's best for you. And it kind of, I know you guys 100% didn't do this. And it's what I appreciate about uh, the, I like to like things farewell, farewell episode as well, where you guys are open and honest, like we had to try different things. It, it's not, Yeah. I, I don't like when you hear people online where they go, this is the one way you're guaranteed to lose weight. And it's like, it's not, it's really just what works for you. It's generally just watching what right. you're eating and being more active. That's as vague as you need to be. Just in those parts, you have to work out. Some people are just like, Look, I just want to walk for two hours a day. And that's fine for them. And right. other people are like, no, I want to work out hard for half an hour. Really strong half an hour exercise. Right. That's it for me. And it's just how it works for you. And when, like, I was, I asked you, obviously, when you were in Disney World to send me some photos and things. Because, like, me and Megan... If COVID hadn't happened, this would be the year we go. We'd go to America, but uh, I think we're aiming for right. next year now, probably because this year is now the house mm-hmm. year. Um, so, right. when we go over there and stuff, yeah, it's going to be very exciting. Hopefully, we see you guys and all kinds of other sort of friends we've got over in America. But when I asked you to send me photos and things, it was like it was making me really happy because I know how much it meant to you, <laughs> you being there because right. you're a massive nerd like I am, but also you being able to go on those rides. So you hear it that you were so happy that you cried on a ride. It, it I know it sounds kind of corny, but hearing that makes me really happy because I just, (laughs) it's just such a nice, joyous thing. And seeing all those photos and videos you were sending me, it just, it looked like it's such a blast at Disney World. Uh, We had a really good time. It was, um, we really struggled with it. We're not going to lie of Mm. of going or not. Um, Mm. It was something that we'd uh, really gone back and forth because if anyone knows us, like we, we kept it, we kept, we kept it locked down. Like we Mm. did everything we 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 bought our food in big batches so we kept out we never we never stopped masking um we were we were good we social distanced from every family member and uh, you know and just did zoom birthdays and everything like that so like anyone that knows us knows that we we we're not just these people that laugh in the face of covid like we mm-hmm. understand like it is a it, it's a big deal um we thankfully have not lost anybody to it um mm-hmm. We we've had a few family members that have caught it, but they caught it after they were vaccinated. It was yeah. bit almost, it, you know, it, it's it was almost nothing for them. Like our our my mother and father in law both caught it. They thought they had allergies. That's how, but they were they were boosted. Yeah, you know, they, so it was it was nothing for them. And so, but we'd reached a point. Well, one, we spent a a ton of money <laughs> on it, but we we bought the tickets. We bought the tickets eighteen months ago. Almost wow. it was almost eighteen months ago when we bought it. So um just kind of like on a whim just like oh we gotta we gotta we gotta have something to look forward to or we're gonna go crazy and so then it started coming up and you know the girls got there the, our girls were able to get vaccinated as well like they opened it up to their age group they're eight and eleven and uh and of course then omicron hit and that was that was a big blow but then we just were we were looking at the science behind it looking at the science behind maths looking behind like like for us, you know, both of us boosted, our girls vaccinated, we have good masks and everything. Looking at the science behind the masks, we're like, you know what? For us, legitimately, if we get sick, it's just everything is pointing towards us being having a minor cold and having to quarantine for a certain amount of time. And not a minor cold. We understand that like there are other things, or we just won't catch it at all because mm-hmm. we're going to be good with our masks and everything. And like they're just showing that like these type of things are going to work. And so we just trusted in the science, trusted in what we what we'd done in the past, and so we went. And we man, it was rough wearing a mask for that long. It I was a imagine. long, long, long time to wear a mask. Like we're double masking at some points too. And but uh, hats off to Disney, um, hundred percent masking indoors, hundred uh, hundred percent. Like there was no, and I probably say about like seventy five to eighty percent of people had it on when they were just kind of walking about outside, which they were not required outside, uh, but they were recommended. And uh, most people were 75, 80% of the people outdoors too. So honestly, we didn't see a face. We barely saw faces the entire time, uh, which was a little weird. And uh, Disney has, I want to say like they, they were up to like 97% vaccinated for all of their workers and stuff too. So anyway, um, we, we, we came back COVID free. 
Um, we, none of us test positive. None of us felt sick. We, we felt great, honestly, being 220 pounds less and at least almost hundred pounds less. Uh, the, it was very easy. We didn't even feel tired at the end of the day. We were pulling the kids like, come on, girls, let's go like <laughs> running and everything. You know, we've been working out all day, every day and, and hit it pretty hard. And, uh, yeah. So when we got to finally go and see everything, we did uh, five days at the parks, two days of travel. Um, our hotel that we stayed at had the Skyliners, so you could get on it from the hotel and just get on a little sky gondola and take it into Epcot or, or Hollywood studios. Pretty great. So, um, we had a blast, uh, ate a ton of food, ate a ton of desserts, like, which is <laughs> rare for me, a lot of dessert. Um, and we tried the gray stuff. It's delicious. Uh, so, uh, from Beauty and the Beast, yeah. but, uh, we, it, honestly, it's so funny. Cause like galaxy's edge was incredible. Uh, they really absolutely knocked out of the park. They need one more ride. They need mm. one more ride in galaxy's edge. And it would be, honestly, it would be, it would be perfect. Mm. Um, rise of the resistance, but what beat all expectations, um, rise of the resistance. It did it all expectations beat, beat every one of them. It was unbelievably fun. Um, and the ride starts before you're even technically on the ride. Like you're in these different queues and everything. It's amazing. Smuggler's Run was an absolute blast. We were lucky we got to go on that twice. It was actually the first ride we rode, period, hmm. um, o- over the whole trip was, was Smuggler's Run. Uh, and that was that was just awesome. And, uh, you know, flying the Millennium Falcon, pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, but uh, they just need one more because Star Tours, while it's one of my favorite rides, isn't actually in Galaxy's Edge. It's outside of it, so mm. it's not even part of it. But uh, it was it was so much fun. But honestly, the the place that blew us away was Pandora from Avatar. I saw the photos. Animal Kingdom. Mental. It blew. It blew us away. We couldn't <laughs> like people say, "Oh, it's really cool." Like he and like we're not avatar haters i know a lot of people hate it and they're like why does this movie make a ton of money but we're not like these massive avatar fans because nobody is nobody's this massive avatar fan it made twenty thousand billion dollars but it's still (laughs) nobody it's nobody's jam i it's it's this weird anomaly it's just like hey everyone's seen this film yeah and it's just like it's a million times yeah it's fine it's a fine movie i enjoy it i love the soundtrack to it i think it's a it's well, it's Fern Gully meets meets uh, Dances with Wolves. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's just a super basic story. Looks great. It translates very well to a theme park. Uh, <laughs> it looked amazing, and we went there in the day, and then we came back at night. At night, it's even better. Um, but like that was the funny thing. We were not expecting to be like super jazzed about Pandora, and we're like, "Whoa, Avatar Land." <laughs> what did you do to us this is amazing <laughs> and so anyway and the rides the uh both rides that are in pandora are are they're bonkers they're amazing that banshee ride that you ride it's it's amazing it really is it's it's unbelievable and um, but that ended up being probably my, my favorite part of it but we the girls were able to our our old our youngest was tall enough to ride was tall enough to ride everything oh, there was no ride that was off li- yeah And so honestly, us not being, because we were supposed to go to Disney World two years ago. Mm -hmm. I know you know the exact same feeling. Like we were going to go two years ago, but now it's like on some level, it was nice because there was nothing that was off limits to her. She had gotten taller. to you guys, like all the family could go on everything you wanted to go on. So it's kind of like, obviously not to downplay COVID, but it's like a blessing in disguise. (laughs) Like We said those exact words, brother. Like we said those (laughs) exact words. Like I couldn't have gone on this ride. Uh, our youngest couldn't have gone on like X rides and everything. So this was like, it was the perfect trip. Uh, the dad in me loved uh, the mobile ordering and the app that comes with, with Disney World. It's so hilarious. Like, what's your favorite part? Oh, the the magicalness, the fireworks. Oh, the app was amazing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it was uh, like, it was so, I felt so dumb because I feel like those, those, I don't know if you get them in the UK. But those progressive commercials where people become their parents when they buy a home, I don't know if that's a thing. There's these commercials so. where they make, yeah, it, it's probably just an American thing, but it's for insurance. And it's it's these commercials of making fun of people for when they buy a home, they turn into their parents. Hmm. And like when, when Elisa and I watch those commercials, we actually feel personally attacked <laughs> because it's like, wait, I do that now. 
what is wrong with me? Like I, I used to be cool. I used to go to concerts. Now I'm caring about like, like getting to the airport four hours early and packing my own snacks and all those different types. It's like, oh, I'll do that now. I'll, I'll send. I'll. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a link to these commercials. You gotta do it. It's like they're too. They're they're ridiculous. Anyway, the app. So the app. Everything is. I'm gonna just talk about the app because it's really it. good. But anyway, the right right off the bat, it zeroes in on where you are. And it gives you the up-to-date wait times on all the rides. So, and then you can just click on the ride and it'll give you the walking directions to it, how long it'll take you to walk to it and what the ride wait time is going to be when you get there. Mm. It's amazing. You can filter through the map and it'll take you to, uh, you know, restaurants, bathrooms, big deal, especially mm. when you have kids, bathroom, what's the closest bathroom? Uh, and then... Uh, and like, and if you don't want rides, you want like an attraction, like are is someone going to be doing like a performance here? Or is there going to be a show that's right here? Movie times, because they have different theaters inside each one of the places, especially Hollywood studios, like there's a whole bunch of movies. And so then um, that's great. But then uh, you can make your reservations through the app. But the biggest thing is they have this thing called mobile ordering, where it's all tied to your, uh, to your hotel. So like you check in, you put your payment into the hotel. Uh, you can through the app, you can unlock your door to your room if you want to. That's wow. something, that's something that's pretty cool. But most of the restaurants, if it's not like a sit down, you know, like a sit down restaurant, you can do what's called mobile ordering and you just tap in what you want, put it in, it charges your room, and then you just walk up and you just grab the food and walk away. Oh, wow. Uh, it, yeah. And so it, it just, you just say, oh, it, it's like, oh, I'm Chris, or remember this, like, oh, cool. Here's your, here's your Dole Whips. And then she's like, yes, just walk away. And, and so like one of the, one of the times, like we were in line for the Jungle Cruise, which is one of our favorite rides. We love that ride. And the, the update for it is great. They, they remove so much of the cultural insensitivity. Kudos to Disney. It's fantastic. Good job. Um, and so, uh, but anyway, I was in, I was in line with the girls for Jungle Cruise. And uh, Lisa had to use the restroom. And so like, I'm texting her and it's like, hey, go to Aloha Isle. And she's like, say my name. And so she walks up and like, Chris, and they just hand her, they hand her ice cream. And she's like, yes. <laughs> and so like, you're just, and so you just skip the line. And, it, and we did that for breakfast because our hotel that we stayed at, we stayed at the Art of Animation Hotel. Super cool. Great for the family. And um, so like, that's what I did for breakfast every morning. So like when we were ready to go to the parks, I would just type in everyone's order and then we'd walk down. And then just be there waiting. We eat, we were able to eat outside. You know, we could demask for a little bit. We eat outside, and we just go to the parks. So it was it was fantastic, and we were able to do that basically for any restaurant. And so anyway, big kudos to the mobile ordering part of the Disney World app, like a big old dad. So <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. So, that's such a cool yeah. thing. It's just that you know, in Britain, like I don't know if the rest of the world perceives us this way, but we we are queuers. Like we we queue for bloody yeah. everything. Like we when we go to other yeah. countries, we judge you for how you people don't know how to queue. You go to Britain, okay, and if you see a line, people are like, oh cool, but there's people queuing for this. If you see something and there's a group of people, you're like, oh, <laughs> th these people aren't ordered yet. You know, they're not civilized people. Yeah, you need to be in a nice clear line right anyone tries to cut in in the uk okay uk people yeah. it's a variety of aggression oh. across uk people okay <laughs> but if, right. if you cut in line at a uk place unless you have a very good reason or you're like right. super super old and there's a great reason for it <laughs> you will not get in the line you will try and push in and everyone will look at you and everyone will call you out like, why are you in this line go to the back what are you do we've been here for this long you are not getting in there if you get yeah. up there i will push in front of you and take the order you are not doing this <laughs> Out you, you've never seen more agitated people or passive aggressive people than british people as a queue cut in <laughs> but like also we also hate queuing because we queue so much right. in our lives. Like you go to another country right. and it's like, hey, there's a collection of people there near the counter. Like, what are they doing? Where's the order? Who was there first? And sometimes you get people just push past. And you often find in like, sometimes in London a little bit or places where there's more people from other countries and stuff, they don't uh -huh. realize the queuing system and you get <laughs> you get some confrontations. <laughs> but like we all hate queuing because we have to spend yeah. so much of our life queuing Most in this nice little new line. Right. And so we're, now where apps have started to come out a lot more, um, we went to Nando's recently, um, which is anyone outside. <laughs> there's the term, the cheeky Nando's, which is like an Amer an English meme. It's like no one Never else knows. It. No Never. one has any idea what the hell yeah. it is. Nando's is just like a, 
a sl- kind of like a healthier KFC. It's basically just they only do chicken. It's pretty much all skinless. It's really tasty. It's kind of like halfway between fast food and a restaurant almost. Like you sit down for the meal, all right. but it's... You, you can have rice instead of uh, fries and stuff, or you can have, you know, peas or, or corn on the cob or whatever. Um, but we went there recently, and there's an app just to order, super easy. Uh, Weather spoons, which politically a lot of British people, including myself, have issues with the owner. But the place itself is just a really cheap pub chain. So you just go there, you have really lush food, really cheap alcohol. It's great app everywhere. And whenever you go places now mm-hmm. with English people, either there's queues and we're hating it, but enforcing the queue, or... Everyone is just belated. There's an app. You go to a new place and they go, try yeah. our app. Or go. sometimes Nando's don't even have to have an app. You just go on their website and scan a QR code on your table. And it's like, when when you see British people happy, it's normally because there's an app that means we don't have to queue. Right. It's just... <laughs> so you saying that to me is exciting me. I know yeah. half my British listeners are like, wait a minute. Are you telling me I can go to Disney World and you can reduce the queuing? <laughs> it's like, I'm going there now. Well, I'm going to go yeah. in there. <laughs> and- and that's the thing is that like at Disney World, like we we were lucky. We waited in line for some rides you know, for like like we said like I I think we went on Star Tours five times mm. because the line was the line was there was no line. Yeah, you know, we were there at a time. We're in January, not Christmas. It's not you know not any other holiday. Uh, so we went. There's just, it was definitely. I mean, we waited in line for some of them, but mm. uh, like for the most part, we didn't wait in line. So, uh, but regardless of it, like, uh, the longest we waited was 70 minutes, Hmm. 70 minutes for rise of the resistance, which most people know that like, when you go there, it's like three hours, it's a three hour wait. Oh my God. So like you said, any place that you could cut down on the lines, cut down on the lines. And like, obviously like with us, like with like, um, Uber eats and DoorDash and all those different types of things. Like we're used to being able to mobile order food mm-hmm. and have it delivered or, or whatever. But the idea that just like, when you're at a place like that, 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 that mobile ordering continues, mm-hmm. um, in the park itself is just great. Like get a churro. Here's a, here's a churro. <laughs> great. So, uh, one of the things we did too, is we bought our, I should have, I should have drunk my coffee in that. You get these little mugs that you can get at your hotel, and then that's how you get your your drinks. Mm. And so you pay twenty bucks. Um, you pay twenty bucks, but then like you just get all your drinks in that cup. As long as you have your cup, you get you get your you get your soda, your coffee. I mean, I drank twenty dollars worth of coffee on the first day because we had to wake up at what time do we have to wake up to get on our plane? Three a.m. Mm. We had to wake up at three a.m. to get to our 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 flight on time. Oof. That was that was, and then. With the time change, it was three hours ahead. Oh, man. It, but, you know, I was just so jazzed. I barely slept that night, too. And I was just like, I want to go to the rides. What's it? <laughs> so <laughs> wanna go on the- I, I, I'm a big kid. I really am. I, I get just as excited as my kids. And uh, even one of the, the wait staff, she actually said at one of the restaurants, because they brought out a dessert. And they brought out, because it was a family style eating um, and so they brought out dessert and then the next time they brought one out, it was orange instead of yellow. I'm like, Ooh, it's orange. And she's just kind of patting me on the shoulder. She's like, you're just a big kid, aren't you? You're just a big, old, you're just a big kid. I love this. It's like, I, yeah, I guess so. It's and one so, of the many reasons I love you. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's, seeing and, you happy makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one of the things is too, is people think we're crazy. Cause like in Disney, we're in California. We're in Southern California. Disneyland is less than a three-hour drive. I was going to ask about like that. Two hours. Yeah, it's about it's like two hours with with with, uh, with traffic. Maybe two and a half with traffic, give or take. Um, but th- there is comparison to Disneyland and, and Disney World, of course. Um, mm-hmm. Disney World has four parks and two water parks, so it has six parks in total. It has, I want to say, like thirty-five different resorts that are surrounding it and everything. And each one of those resorts is neat and different and an attraction in its own way, honestly. Uh, and then um, Disneyland is, is two parks. It's Disneyland itself, and it has California Adventures. And then uh, there's a Disneyland Hotel, and there's a, a hotel inside of California Adventures. And Disneyland and, and Magic Kingdom, Disneyland in California and Magic Kingdom at Disney World are very, very similar. Mm-hmm. um they, they have some they, there are some, certain things that are dissimilar um like for one uh, a small world it's a small world in disneyland is its own separate area that has this big like almost castle-esque uh facade in front of it 
And then while in Disney World, uh, uh, it's a small world. It's just like right in front of Peter Pan. And like you wouldn't even like to a Californian saying that that's Disney. It's a small world. Like, wait, what? Why isn't it? It's got its giant. So it's a little different. The castle at Magic Kingdom is like twice the size of Disneyland's castle. But like for the most part, they're very close. They mm-hmm. really are. Um, the Main Street USA is is almost it's it's basically a carbon copy. Um California Adventures, you could kind of say, is an analog to uh, to uh, Hollywood Studios and Magic Kingdom. They are very similar. Um, Hollywood Studios is more like uh, more like golden age of movies and things like that. While California Adventures uh, is is has more like Marvel stuff. That's where all the Marvel things are at. Hmm. Is at California Adventures in Disneyland. Um, Disney World is almost like legit. It's weird. It's almost devoid completely of marvel it's okay. weird hmm. we were yeah it was like we saw nothing because then at california adventures they just opened the avengers campus there it's supposed to be super cool obviously we didn't go but then also then you throw in at magic at disney world you have epcot which is crazy it's super fun great place to eat best food is at epcot is epcot the, all, all the futuristic sort of rides and stuff all the yeah, crazy yeah. vr stuff yeah Exactly. Yeah. So Epcot has like the test track, it has uh Soren and things like that. And then it has the world showcase around the ball, hmm. you know, right. Or be- behind the ball. And, um, you know, you go to different countries each time you go and um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Pre COVID each per they had kind of like a foreign exchange student program there where everybody that worked at um, the country uh, in the world showcase uh, air quotes on that for sure. Uh, they were from that country. So like you could ask them about like what, what they was like living in that country and stuff. And like, that's a bummer. Cause my girls would have eaten that up. Yeah. Obviously with travel restrictions like that was not possible. So it was just, you know, Americans. <laughs> so we're used to those. Uh, but, um, and then, then, then the big one is animal kingdom. Animal mm. kingdom is incredible. It's, it's the size of, uh, the size of manhattan island it's oh, humongous this wow. place is this place is huge yeah it's huge you're not on most of it it's a big huge wildlife reserve you can take a what's called the kilimanjaro safaris you can actually go on a big like actual truck like big huge truck and they take you out into the middle of it and they and you're driving through and like there's a giraffe right there and stuff like that it's super fun um but uh that's i mean like it, it's it's hard to compare the two because Disney World is so much bigger and there's so much more to do. Yeah. Um, that it's even someone that's been to Disneyland, gosh, I don't know how many times, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother level. And it was our first time for our girls. They loved it. Would so you we say Christmas? Oh, sorry. Would would you say then like because obviously me and Megan we've spoken about going there. We we want to travel around like I want to clarify, if you tell us to go to Disney World, we'll still come and visit you, okay? To clarify. <laughs> uh, Don, what do you think that would change? But would you say, like, because me and Megan, we looked online about Disney World and Disneyland. Obviously, Galaxy's Edge is a big part of what I wanted to go. And I know that Disneyland have got some Star Wars stuff, but I don't think it's as big or as anything at all like Disney World oh, it's the exact same. Is it, it's identical? the exact same. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then yeah, the Harry the, Potter both- thing... They're both Galaxy's Edge. Right, yeah. but then, then there's the Harry Potter stuff, which is obviously Universal, which is, there's one on each as well, but I think that the one mm-hmm. that's in Florida is bigger and has got a, like a Hungarian Horntail ride, whereas the other one is basically the same, but doesn't quite have that same ride. Like, would you say that the yeah. Florida one's basically just, in general, it's just bigger, not necessarily Echo's better, but because it's almost the same in all certain ways, but then, apart from the Marvel stuff, but then there's loads of add-ons, it's just kind of better value in a sense. Like, what are your opinions someone who's been to both yeah so so Cal- california is an expensive state which is right. where i live california is much more expensive um so like to stay at the disneyland hotel is like it's like 600 bucks a night i mm-hmm. think at least when i went to check it the hotel we stayed at in florida which is at a big you know big resort it's huge it's 120 dollars a night for the most really? expensive night I'm surprised yeah, it's cheaper. So, even I know you say the state, but like I would have as wrongly assumed that because it's Disney no, it's World, because mm, it's because they can accommodate so many more people. That's the right. biggest, the biggest difference. Is as someone that, like I love Disneyland. I do Disneyland. No matter what, is incredibly crowded. You will never go there and not be. It's not. It's it's never not crowded. Just because it's so much smaller. There's mm. so much. So then you go to Disney World, 
you can, everyone goes to Disney World, it can accommodate, it, honestly, probably the same amount of people go to Disneyland and go to Disney World, but then you can split it up into two other parks, hmm. which in turn makes each park less busy. Um, plus your, your, all the other stuff that you can do at Disney World itself too. Um, I mean, each hotel itself is basically its own little theme park. It's, mm. a, it's amazing. Um, like our hotel had three separate pools, two restaurants, um, arcades and stuff like that too. Like it, we could have just stayed at our hotel and hung out. They did, they did movies outside, drive-in movies every night for the kids. Um, and so like we, we didn't even have to leave our hotel if we wanted to just have a good time. Obviously, we had a better time going to the <laughs> world famous parks. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but if I, I, I could, I can't speak on universal. Um, we love universal studios here in, in California. I love it. It's such a, it's a much more chill vibe. Um, there it's usually a lot less crowded. Um, but yeah, the, the Harry Potter wizarding world of Harry Potter is much bigger at Universal Studios Orlando, hmm. uh, you actually get on the train and you take the train to and from different parts of the park. So, uh, but I can't speak on it. I haven't been there. We loved Wizarding World in in California. I'm looking forward to going back so I can actually ride those rides because they looked really fun when my daughters went on them. Hmm. So they looked like a blast. Uh, but I mean, um, you going to Disneyland is so nostalgic. And it's that like it it, it is nostalgic. Um, I, they're building the Tron Park in mm. Disney World, and I'm pretty sure they're adding it on in Disneyland too. And so there's always things that they're adding and changing and things like that. But Disneyland uh, is is about the nostalgia. It really is, especially if you watch like behind the attraction, you look at the the different Disney's and like in Shanghai, Hong Kong, and stuff like. How much more advanced they are. We've got one in Paris. Uh, those parks. That's the Europe yeah, local yeah. one and, that I've gone to a lot when I was a yeah. kid. Yeah, but the like the ones in Shanghai and Hong Kong, those rides are so high tech. Mm. But it's because uh in America, if they want to change it, people riot because like, don't mess with the nostalgia, keep it the same. And like <laughs> I, I understand it. I also understand it at the same time. Like I get it. Like I'm a big nostalgia guy too. Like I do understand. Um, but like in one in Disney World, like you're see you're gonna see the more advanced rides. You're gonna see the Epcot and Hollywood Studios. You're gonna start to see those rides because it's not they're not holding on to the nostalgia as much. Um, so there is gonna be some more advancement at Disney World itself. Uh, mm. But yeah, I w- I w- if if I was gonna tell anybody as a guy that's been to both multiple times, I go to Disney World. Like legitimately, there's it's less it's less crowded. It's cheaper. You're going to save a lot more money, especially if you're already flying. You're yeah. already flying anyway. Um, it's it's cheaper. Hotels are cheaper. Food's cheaper. Everything's cheaper. Even the lightsabers, if you're going to buy the lightsaber, they do the whole lightsaber thing. It, mm. like said, it's cheaper at Disney World. That, anno- um, like that annoys me. That element should be the same for both. That, that's frustrating, but that's good to know yeah. because, like I've said it's to Megan. Che- it's cheaper. Because I said to me, I was like, I don't care how much it costs. I have to go into my savings. I, well, we were going to save up for it. You know, we're pretty good with money. We we just yeah, put yeah, away like course. hundreds of pounds at the start of every month. Some is for a holiday. Some is for the house. Some is yeah. for just like other stuff. So we normally at the start of each yeah. month, it's just like more than half our wage. We've got the bills come out straight away. And then what we've got left is disposable. More than half, it's just gone into savings just so we can, you know, when we go right. traveling out the year, it's like, oh, cool. Uh, fuel costs a bit more driving up to Scotland, we thought. Let's just take it out of the holiday fund rather than being, you know, right. a term over here we use skint when you haven't got much money um so with the galaxy's edge thing i know we'll be wrapping up here soon as well so running out of time um but like i said to megan i was like i don't care how much it costs i mean if it was like a thousand pounds i that would probably be my limit but i was like i genuinely would spend hundreds of pounds which i'm gonna have to to just the experience of going to galaxy's edge like i would pay the ticket price to for the whole of disney world just to go to galaxy's edge because that's you know my jam and like yeah. go to the workshop and build a lightsaber and megan's super hyped for it too and we want to make our lightsabers and obviously gonna have to fedex it back to the uk it's gonna be like another 50 odd dollars each plus um and then we're gonna put them on the wall of our house like a cross like a like a crest almost yeah. like we want to do that sort of thing so it's like it's for me it's making a lightsaber i can't wait to do but everything else you know being immersed in star wars stuff I'm just, oh man i mean i'm wearing my i'm wearing a star wars top actually here which is oh, from yeah. america 
Yeah, and you're wearing your Mos Eisley one. Mine. Yeah, I was going to say that because I saw the photo of that when you were showing me some of the Disney World pictures. But uh-huh. like, Megan bought me this from America. Like when we were first dating, um, uh-huh. after like two or three weeks of us meeting, she went to America um, for a month. So very early on in our, before we were even calling each other boyfriend, girlfriend, when we literally were just mm-hmm. dating. And she went to America for a month um, to see her friend and travel and this sort of stuff. And she got me this from... I don't I can't remember where it was um because I can't remember any American shops it might have been the Trader Joe's do they sell clothes that's a food <laughs> no. place isn't it that's like trail yeah, mix yeah, and stuff a, isn't it? It, it I mean it's a it's a <laughs> that's really funny grocery store oh okay. yeah that's, no that's so I know probably, so little probably, about it yeah yeah what yeah, do you think no, of- don't worry don't don't worry about <laughs> it's supposed to, stand up let me see the shirt let me see. <laughs> it's just a standard start is that the OG poster yeah, I mean, you, you literally could get that at Walmart. There we so, go. Like, it could, Maybe it was a Walmart. Yeah, it could have been Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can buy Star Wars so tops funny. in Primark here, which is like uh, yeah, yeah. very similar. Um, but, I mean, yeah, that's absolutely. amazing, talking about like Disney stuff, because yeah, we obviously want to um, in, uh, go over to America and like we want to go to Florida because my friend Tony lives there. Um, but we also want to go you know, to California because you guys are there. We, there's more to do in California than just Disney and Universal, obviously. Yeah. California is... You could do you could do so much here, mm. and uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, just um, I know there's probably some purists out there that would say like, oh no, go to Disneyland, but like, it, you just can move better. Mm. Yeah, you can. You don't have to wait as long in lines. Like Disneyland is always crowded. Like it just, it just is because there's just a finite amount of space you can put them into, and um, but doesn't mean it's not fun. Yeah, Universal Studios here in California is never busy like it, it's great like i don't know how it's always i've never been and had to wait that long in anything so wow. um well that's the yeah, that's the so trick I, so florida disney world yeah and then california uh-huh. at universal but also we said we want to travel to america we want to go to vegas as well because i want to see the grand canyon totally. um and mm-hmm. megan said vegas are quite cool with some cool museums there and we've got a couple of friends a shout out to bz and tonya because they live in vegas so it's like there's people i know all like scattered around america so like i, I want to mm-hmm. be able to see some cool parts of it but i was me and megan were having this sort of debate before covid we were just looking at them and we were like you know this looks the same as this one but this one costs more money but then this one has got this right. we're just like but we want to go to both states so there's not even a really easy <laughs> right. clear thing of which one to go to <laughs> so yeah. um, I'll, I'll be getting I'll, megan to listen we'll to this. meet you in vegas yeah, if 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 you want to meet in Vegas, we can meet you. There. It's about a four hour drive for us, so wow. it's it's not that far. That's amazing. So, uh, yeah, obviously, since we've had the kids, we don't go very often. <laughs> no, uh, I can imagine I, not. <laughs> I hate gambling. I, I'm not. A fan. I am the cheapest. Yeah, yeah I, hate I am the too. cheapest guy on the face. But like the shows are great there, buffets are great there. There's That's so many other see. great things to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's a cool place to see. Like it's it's unlike anything you've ever seen in your life when you go mm. there. And they just opened up a new American football stadium there, and I want to go there. It's high, super high tech, and everything. So I really want to see that. Yeah. Um, Grand Canyon. We're going to take the girls. Pro- actually, honestly, we're probably going to take them to the Grand Canyon next month. Nice. So that that's our plan. Yeah. That's so, amazing. I've been, but Elise and the girls have never been, and it's only a seven hour drive for us. Mm. Seven, seven hour, nineteen minute drive. So it's not that's not long at all. Not long in so, American terms. Uh, as, Over here, you can almost get to Scotland uh, in that time. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Someone someone joked in the EU when they were in Europe. They said like, "Oh, you joke that like you miss a turn and you end up in Norway." Yeah. And then like some, I saw someone on Twitter like, "Gosh dang it, I did it! Wait, I was making fun of people for that." And it's like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, to dr- to drive across, like it would take us if we drove from our house to Disney World, it would take us thirty seven hours if we didn't even stop. So that's how long it would take to get there. So of uh, anything under 10 hours for an American is like, that's pretty good. Yeah. So, whereas, whereas yeah. for us, it's like, oh, driving to Scotland and back in one day, which is what I have. I've done. I did twice at the end of 2021. Yeah. yeah each way was eight hours of no traffic, but there was storms and traffic and stuff. So it was like 10 ish hours. Wow. I'm like, God, that was a long drive. In America, it's like, and then you go- could drive that far. It's still not even go out the state in some places. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. In California. Yeah. It goes to, for us from Bakersfield to San Francisco. At least his family lives in San Francisco. Um, it's four and a half hours, five with traffic. Yeah, and plus in Scotland, you got to worry about all the ghosts too. So you got <laughs> you're constantly weaving in and out of the ghosts and everything. So you got to oh. watch out. <laughs> oh my, my god! My friend Drew, he lives out. He lives outside of Edinburgh, and 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 I just say like I was listening to a podcast about Edinburgh. It's like, man, that is a haunted place. Like, why would it, like it's just like. 
this is ghosts. He's like, yeah, you just gotta, you just gotta like walk around him. He's a, he's got a good sense of humor about it. But yeah. What a boyfriend said um, <laughs> who who moved to Scotland. They were like, um, they weren't enjoying it much. This was years ago, like 10 years ago uh, for someone new from college. And I was like, what, what's Scotland like? And they're like, it's not good. I was like, really? I've heard good things. Like, where I am, it's just heroin and iron brew. And I was like, what? Because <laughs> it's iron brew is the in I, Scotland, the only place I've in the world. I've got to try iron brew. It's no, weirdly yeah, good. I, I've got to try it. Weirdly yeah, nice. Uh, my friend Drew, you, I got to introduce you, or my friend Drew. You, you would love him. But he, like, we've done podcasts. And he just says chugging this iron brew, and you cannot find it in the states. No. And I have wanted to try it for probably for like five, six years now. When he, I just saw him. It's like, what is that? I was like, what does it taste like? And he's like, Metal? it tastes like iron brew. Yeah, it's like, he's, it he's like, like it tastes iron. like iron brew. And, and, like and so I'm like, okay, well, no, what, it, what does it taste like? He said, well, tell me what Coke tastes like. Oh, it tastes like Coke. He's like, iron brew tastes like iron brew. I'm he's like, not wrong. It, you got me. He's not wrong. So, yeah. I, I'll finish so. this off. It's, it's the only, Scotland is the only place in the world where the number one selling soft drink isn't Coca-Cola because it's iron brew. Like it's, right. it's, it's, but obviously we're Scotland to connect to England, so I can get Iron Brew like down the shop. And just once a year, I'll get this massive yeah. craving for Iron Brew, and I have it once, and I'll be like, "That was really nice," but I, I don't want it again <laughs> for another year, I and then I'll treat it. myself. <laughs> well, I have to, I have to send you Cactus Cooler. Mm. So Cactus Cooler is 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 a is a soft drink, and it's only sold in the Southwest United States, so like Southern California, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, like everywhere that you think of like as the Old West. In movies, that's where they would sell this cactus cooler. And it's this odd, like, orange pineapple soda. And it's amazing. But no one outside of the southern United, southwest United States even knows that it exists. So I have to send you some of that. Wow. Yeah, we'll have to do a little, little gift exchange. That'd be fun. Um, <laughs> a little swap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Chris, it's always a delight speaking with you. All we spoke about was your incredible weight loss journey. And then Disney. I've still got the note from... This is the notepad yeah. I used from our first conversation, okay? Because there, <laughs> I made like 10 notes of it. And we still... We've barely spoken about, you know, Lego. Okay, We're going to have to have do, another let's conversation. Do, let's let's do rapid. Just do a rapid one real quick. <laughs> just, just, just do rapid. Like, oh, God. I, I, got, I got like six minutes. Six okay, minutes. Rapid. Let's do oh, this. Oh, God. Well, I don't want right. to start with lego because that's going to be a whole massive conversation i love so. lego i love I, lego I, everything about lego is great there you go did it okay disney. what do you think of like disney shows and stuff like disney plus what do you think of that hey i i hated boba fett i thought he was super overrated now i like boba fett see there you go <laughs> there you go yeah. disney done this is done <laughs> line done under it star wars like yeah. like, like yeah. what's your favorite star wars movie uh return of the jedi return that's of the my- jedi then rogue one uh, yeah, Return of the see, Jedi and Rogue One. I think mine's Revenge of the yeah. Sith, then Return of the Jedi. I, Return of the Jedi didn't used to be, but as I've gotten older, I just appreciate it more. I, I love it. It's just, man. I, I, huge fan of Ewoks. I know so you love I, Wicket and everything. Oh, yes. I, for me, Return of the Jedi was the one that I saw so much as a kid. I didn't mm. see the other ones because I, I think we've talked about this. My dad, yeah. we didn't watch sci-fi stuff. He liked Westerns and war movies. That's what, mm. at Indiana Jones. That's what we watch. Mm. So I saw Return of the Jedi when it come on cable, and that was that was it. So as far as I know, if it doesn't have Jabba the Hutt, doesn't have Ewoks, it doesn't have the Emperor, what is Star Wars? It's nothing. So like that's so Return <laughs> of the Jedi. So ending this conversation on a very controversial yeah. opinion. I mean, I yeah. love. So there you go. I, I, I love. I love Ewoks and Star Wars. Uh, I want to clarify. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I we'll we'll wrap this up now. Um, do you want to tell people just um where? Uh, where people can find you like are you still keeping the I like to like things social yeah, media so, going so I got rid of Twitter just because Twitter is a horrible place to be Accessible. so I got rid of Twitter uh, so twi- the second the show is over oh Twitter's gone like immediately <laughs> like, man I'm gonna I'm gonna miss the show but man I'm not gonna miss Twitter click <laughs> gone so that was awesome um, I'm still on Instagram though I like Instagram Um, it's fun just like like with Megan I love her grits get fit like it's great to to, to watch her journey uh, but you can uh, Instagram if anybody needs a, a pick me up, if anyone needs a little like accountability for weight loss, if anyone needs anything like anything specific about like weight loss, like Elise and I are open books about it. We have absolutely no qualms talking about like sk- excess skin. Like, what does your poop end up being like after you wor- you work out a ton? Like, all this like we don't. I care. should have like, asked those questions. I I, I mean, yeah, I didn't think about the poop one, but I should have asked about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but like if if you have anything, you can find us on on Instagram at uh, like two. That's the number two. So like two like things on Instagram, and mm. uh, I'm still active. I'm gonna stay active on that. 
I might transition that just like a personal account, but yeah. I'm gonna I'll keep the hashtag. I'll keep the the at for it. But yeah, if anyone has anything they want to talk about, like I I'm glad to talk about anything. You want to talk about being a dad? You want to talk about being a parent? You want to talk about beards? You want to talk about anything? You want to talk about how much you love Mike and Megan? Like any any of those things? Like I'm down. <laughs> so please don't message Chris telling you how much you love me. That would be like that would be yeah. lovely for my ego, but I don't need to hear that because <laughs> right, right. I don't need that in my person personal life hearing, you know, people already talking about me in positivity. It's just like I just want them right. to talk to me to my face, you know, tell me, help help me feel good about me. I'm joking, I feel great about me. But um Chris, it's been an absolute delight uh, chatting with you. I'll, I'll stop the recording here, but I don't want you to leave because I've got a question for you after recording. Super secret okay. question. Um, but just thank okay. you, as always, dude, for being so open and honest and for being Love emotionally you, vulnerable because you. you are, as I said in our first conversation that was recorded, you are the epitome of the modern man and more men need to be like you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank <you. laughs>